Hey guys, Peter here to tell you about the latest from Skull Fist, Paid in Full, out April 22nd on Atomic Fire Records. The album has 8 tracks, 34 minutes in length, and this is the band's 4 full length studio album. They are a Canadian heavy metal band. Now this is a record that feels very simple across all the different platforms. It's simple in the design, it's simple in the structure, it's simple in the sound, and definitely simple in the experience. They definitely didn't overcomplicate this record, but by at least not trying to complicate some of the elements, they allow the album to feel very balanced, very uniform from start all the way to the finish line. When you get to the end of this record and you look back, there aren't enough songs on this album that really stand out in the crowd, that have their own DNA, that have their own fingerprint. The whole record feels unified, feels as one. Perhaps too much for an album that has 8 songs and 34 minutes in length. As far as the soundscape goes, this feels like a safe record. They didn't have a, an album on their hands where you could see them trying to take some gambles, try to take some risks, try to go outside the box or create something that perhaps they've been working on before, but they hadn't really been there. And, and this album is gonna be the one that's gonna allow the fans to see a different side or an evolution into Skull Fist. To me, this is a lateral move considering everything that the band has released up until this point. It just doesn't really offer anything that I hadn't seen before and it definitely lacks movement and it definitely lacks energy, something that's always been a little bit of a staple as far as Skull Fist is concerned. I'm also not a fan of the mixing. I don't like how this album sounds. It feels disconnected at times. It feels like the elements, while being in the same room, they're not necessarily working with one another. I wanted more of a blended front. If you're gonna go with a methodic record, with a record that doesn't have ebbs and flows, that doesn't have peaks and valleys, that it's not super energetic, super mobile, super volatile. You want at least the sound to feel as uniform as it can, to have a stronger presence, to feel united so that all the elements enrich the overall experience. That doesn't happen on this album. I felt like the bass, for example, felt out of touch with reality as far as some of the songs are concerned. In some tracks, sure, it's well connected, it blends in with the overall experience and it adds some thickness, it adds some groove to how the songs come across. But there are some tracks where it just feels like it's it's in the way, it's getting in the way of the guitars, it's getting in the way of the drums, it's getting in the way of the vocals and it really hurts the soundscape and the overall feeling that you could get out of some of these tracks. The guitars also lack energy, I mean the whole album feels like it's simmering and the guitars are a huge reason for that because they don't have that drive, they don't have that speed. This is more of a mellow, uh, mid-tempo heavy metal record. It lacks that energy, it lacks that movement, it lacks those bursts that really would break the record and allow an album with eight songs in 34 minutes to feel even shorter. This album actually feels longer than what it is. The solos are maybe the only moments within this record where there is some energy, there is some movement, that there is some, you know, some power. But outside of the solos, everything seems very controlled, everything seems very safe. Perhaps the only bright light, in my humble opinion, on this record are the vocals. I absolutely love Zach's performance on this album. I love his range, I love the tone, I love the mixing. Uh, very traditional to, to Skull Fist, having that raw feel almost like a, a, you know, a recording studio or jam session type of approach. It works really well for them and it works well on this record and it's definitely the bright spot throughout the entire album. An album that ends up being disappointing to me. I was expecting a lot more from this band. I wanted them to take steps forward and upwards and this record feels just like moving sideways. It doesn't really add uh, much to what Skull Fist has been up until this point. It's just a record that while not being horrible, it's also not outstanding. It's just kind of like middle of the pack. And that to me is disappointing all around considering the potential and the talent that this band has. As far as favorite songs are concerned, I wanna start off with Paid In Full. This is the opening track of the album. And I like this song because not of what it offers, but what it represents for the whole record. It's a song that sets the tone in terms of what the whole album is gonna be about. So when you press play on this album, if this song doesn't intrigue you, if this song doesn't catch your attention, then nothing really will because this album is really a representation of what this song 
has in store. It moves slowly, it has a, a way of playing itself out or carrying the listener through. Most of the, the, the time that you're moving through this track, you're actually moving because the vocals are guiding your experience, they're connecting you through it. The sound feels very calm, the sound feels like it's moving, but not necessarily with the right movement. So the vocals are the ones doing all the heavy lifting in terms of keeping you connected with how the track comes together and with the overall song and the experience that it gives. There is some energy here and there, but not enough to have an overall experience that makes this track feel absolutely bombastic. So the impact of this song is the expectations that it sets for the entire record. Next we have Crush, Kill, Destroy. Definitely a more energetic track, definitely a track that has a little bit more movement, both musically and vocally. It has more of an entertaining touch to it because of that movement. And I really like the backing vocals in the chorus. It gave volume to the, to the vocals themselves and it made the song feel more alive. This track feels like a live song in the studio and those vocals and that chorus really paints a perfect picture of how this song is gonna sound like in a live environment. And I think that is the beauty of this track, is bringing Skull Fist live into the studio, bringing all of those attributes together, not changing too much of their DNA, just adding a few things here and there, in this case, those backing vocals, and then having a solo that really hits the mark. And then the second half of the song, it bursts. Finally, you get some speed, but that speed and that movement is not consistent. The track starts to simmer once again, as you reach the, the end of the track, closing off exactly how it started. So having that speed, that burst of energy in the middle there, it kind of leaves you with a nice taste, but a bad taste at the same time because you wanted more songs to be consistently like that and this album really lacks on that front. Last but not least, Heavier Than Metal. This is my favorite song in the whole album because of the consistency that it offers, both musically and vocally. It had more direction, it had a sense of purpose, was a track that you totally can tell exactly where it's starting, where it's going, and how you're gonna get there. It also has an impactful chorus, something that's kind of missing from this album. This album is missing hooks, is missing catchiness, is missing hooks in the guitars, in the riffs, in the melodies, and is missing hooks as far as the vocal lines, as far as the lyrics are concerned, in those choruses in order for them to become memorable. This track breaks the mold ever so slightly because it does offer a little bit of all the above. Not too much, but a little bit, at least enough to make the track really stand out from everything else that came before and everything else that comes after. This is it, Skull Fist, paid in full, out April 22nd on Atomic Fire Records. Let me know your thoughts on the band, on the singles. Use the comment section below. I'll be reading those again and back to you. Take care, guys.